Hello, my name is Michael Tsenkota, and welcome to our show, International Business, Marketing and Strategy. I'm joined by my colleague, Professor Charles Scuba, who, like me, teaches international business and marketing here at Georgetown University. And what we will do today and in our subsequent sittings is talk about current issues and concerns in the international business arena and hopefully enlighten you and maybe even in the discussions enlighten ourselves on what does it all mean, how does it fit, uh, what's the implication for international business. So having said that, let me just turn it over to my colleague, Professor Skua. Well, thank you very much, Professor Zinkoda. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, well, today, perhaps the biggest talk in Washington in the last week or so, since actually President Obama's State of the Union address, is his National Export Initiative. Uh, in the State of the Union address, President Obama announced, Michael, that we were going to, his goal was, within the next five years, was to double United States exports in that period. And uh, it's a noble goal, and uh, it's a good one. Um, I believe, in my opinion, that it is achievable. Um, no, but let's talk about that. Uh, I, I know you know the elements of this export initiative. Do you think, Michael, that uh, the, some of the proposals that the president has made uh, are the necessary steps we need to take? Well, obviously, I, I fully agree with you about the nobility of the goal. Uh, the question, of course, is always in the detail. How do you achieve that? And that seems to be the big issue because doubling, that's, that's a far, far goal to achieve doubling of exports, especially with the subsidiary question, who's going to give up their market share internationally to allow us from the US to take it? Or is the market just going to grow so much uh, and, and perhaps I think the latter is the direction to, to consider, to let the world know that the U.S. can no longer be the only main key consumptive locomotive who, who absorbs all these imports from other countries, which means their exports. Uh, there have to be other countries also coming on board and, and increase their own demand. And we're looking, of course, at the obvious suspects, we're looking at, for example, the European Union, in particular Germany, which has for decades ridden the export uh, engine to a very large degree and has, has based its domestic economic growth on that almost exclusively. Then there's, of course, China, which has imported uh, a lot to the United States and also to other countries. But the question is, can there be more consumption within China of goods that come from abroad. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think uh, China inevitably is going to be one of the key elements of any kind of solution moving forward. Uh, and uh, China, like you say, there is one of those countries that has built its economic success on its exports. Robert Samuelson wrote an excellent uh, op-ed piece in the Washington Post earlier this year in which he really, dis he, I believe the title of the article was China's $2.4 trillion slush fund. And in the article, he accused China of practicing mercantilism, which is essentially practicing zero-sum international trade for China's be uh, benefit and the loss of other countries. Uh, essentially, he was saying that China, because of it keep its artificial maintenance of its currency at approximately 40% below its value, that that in effect keeps the cost of China's exports or the price of China's exports low, automatically increasing their appeal in the world marketplace. Um, the, now the United States has been reluctant over time to accuse China of actually manipulating its currency, inevitably because this will uh, not be well received by the Chinese and carries with it the official accusation of currency manipulation carries with it certain mechanisms that uh, would certainly not be good for the international global marketplace at this time, certainly not between trade relations between the United States and China. However, um, I think there's, there's validity to Samuelson's claim, and uh, we need to see some action. Uh, the Chinese this week 
indicated, uh, I think Premier Wen said, indicated that they did not believe that the currency was undervalued. But this is key to uh, uh, the United States and China achieving some better balance. Now, uh, now, Michael, in the President's Export Initiative, he called for a few specific things. Um, he actually launched an export cabinet. Uh, are you familiar with that? Well, there's the export cabinet combined with the President's Export Council. Yes. Uh, when, when I served in the Reagan administration and the Bush administration, we actually did have a President's Export Council, which fell in disuse later on. Well, I served in the President George W. Bush administration, and the President's Export Council was, was actively used uh, during our time. It fell certainly into disuse the first year of the Obama administration. So it's encouraging to see it come back. Good, good to see, because obviously the input from companies, the, the input from people who understand these issues is tremendously important. Uh, in, in terms of having a council of advisors, uh, that helps. Because Let me just give you one example. Uh, there, there is the notion of increasing expenditures on export promotion. Yes. Which is, a, which is a good notion, but of course, just tossing money at the problem is not sufficient. Uh, we have, for example, here at Georgetown, done some quite good research, which focuses on export development strategies and has come to the conclusion that companies at different levels of expertise and at different levels of activities in international business need different types of help. So for example, companies which just start out, they need main, mainly help in understanding the mechanisms, the, uh, the uh, obtaining financing to just get started. But companies which have a lot of experience they may wonder much more about government regulation, about providing services abroad. So what that all boils down to, if you try to help companies become more effective in international business, you need to concentrate on their needs, their improvement capabilities, and not toss everything at them. And this way you can be parsimonious in terms of public expenditures, but at the same time successful in making and activity happen. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, Michael, I, I know that uh, export promotion is going to be critical going forward. I think uh, too, little is credit, too little credit is given to the very good professionals we have working in the United States government, in the uh, Commerce Department, in the uh, International Trade Administration, and in the Foreign Commercial Service, which is a part of the International Trade Administration. We really have, we, are, we have skilled, smart, and very dedicated individuals working to help co U.S. companies build their exports. Remarkable thing is, is that not enough people, not enough American businesses know about the resources that are available to them at the Commerce Department. Export promotion will be a key thing going forward. I hope that the President and uh, the Export Council will come up with strategies uh, to make these services better known. There are some other elements to this uh, uh, national export initiative that are key, uh, the, the free trade agreements with Colombia, Panama, and uh, the, uh, the Republic of Korea uh, are critical to moving this forward. And uh, that will be, I think we should talk about this in our next show, Michael, because that will be a critical issue, whether the president has the clout with the obstructionist members of Congress. Well, absolutely, that's a key concern. And and just as food for thought, I believe the key framework to all these activities are, uh, is, the framework is, uh, to reduce risk for companies or increase the rewards when they engage in international business. And there, there may be many, many ways of doing it, but what is the best way of achieving that risk reduction or reward increase? And, that will in part drive many of our future discussions also with our guests, which we expect to have. How do we implement things? How do we make a difference? And how do we truly change economic performance in the international business sector? So thank you very much for your attention. Yes, indeed. Until thank you. next time.